टुडे वील डिस्कस रेजिस्टन्स टू एंटीमाइक्रोबियल एजेंट सो ड्रग रेजिस्टन्स वॉट इज मीन बाय ड्रग रेजिस्टन्स रेजिस्टन्स मीन्स इट्स अ इनसेन्सिटिवनेस ऑफ अ मायक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम टू अ पर्टिक्युलर एंटीमायक्रोबियल एजेंट इट इज द इनसेन्सिटिवनेस ऑफ अ मायक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम टू अ पर्टिक्युलर एंटीमायक्रोबियल एजेंट वी कॉल इट ॲज अ रेजिस्टन्स टू अ ड्रग सो वॉट आर द वेरियस कॉजेस कॉजेस ऑफ रेजिस्टन्स मीन्स ड्रग फेल टू रीच इट्स टार्गेट वॉट एवर द टार्गेट इज गिवन ड्रग रीच फेल टू रीच इट्स टार्गेट बिकॉज ऑफ द आल्टर्ड परमॅबिलिटी बिकॉज ऑफ द आल्ट्रेशन इन द परमॅबिलिटी और इनॅक्टिवेशन ऑफ द ड्रग बाय वेरियस एन्झाईम्स फॉर एक्झाम्पल पॅनिसिलिन्स आर इनॅक्टिवेटेड बाय द एन्झाईम बिटा लॅक्टमेज बिकॉज इट्स अ बिटा लॅक्टम अँटीबायोटिक इट्स टार्गेट इज आल्टर्ड लाईक पेनिसिलिन बायंडिंग प्रोटीन आल्ट्रेशन इट्स टार्गेट लाईक पेनिसिलिन बायंडिंग प्रोटीन देर इज आल्ट्रेशन इन द पेनिसिलिन बायंडिंग प्रोटीन so that target is altered so these are the reasons for the resistance now types of bacterial resistance types of bacterial resistance there are two types of bacterial resistance natural and acquired so what is meant by natural resistance natural resistance means it is genetically determined it is genetically determined or some microorganisms are resistant to certain antimicrobial agents which is genetically determined that means gram positive cocci are not affected by streptomycin gram positive cocci are not affected by streptomycin it is genetically determined this is the characteristic of group or species like gram positive cocci are not affected by streptomycin pseudomonas is insensitive to penicillin g natural resistance does not produce any clinical problem as some other antimicrobial agents are available for that particular infection means we know that this is going to show resistance that means gram positive cocci they are going to show resistance to the streptomycin pseudomonas is going to show resistance to penicillin g we know that so it's not a clinical problem it's not a big issue the big issue is about the acquired resistance means development of resistance in a previously sensitive microorganism due to use of an antimicrobial agent for a certain period of time means initially it is sensitive later on it becomes resistance initially sensitive later on it becomes resistance it shows resistance and this is the major clinical problem because in this case what happens drug becomes useless which was earlier useful earlier it was useful but now it becomes useless right majority of the staphylococci are now resistant to the penicillin g salmonella typhi becomes resistant to chloramphenicol and it is because of the acquired resistance it is because of the acquired resistance now what is the mechanism of resistance mechanism of resistance the commonly used word resistance may be acquired because of the mutation commonly used word nowadays mutation so what is mean by mutation there is a alteration in the structure of the chromosomal dna there is a changes in the chromosomal dna changes in the structure of the chromosomal dna due to development of the resistance strains due to development of the resistance strains there is a alteration in the structure of the chromosomal dna so why we use combination therapy in tuberculosis why we use combination therapy in tuberculosis why we do not use single drug like rifampicin 
isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol. Why would we use HRZE? Why we use combination therapy? The answer is here. Any sensitive population of a microbe, any sensitive population of a microbe, they contain some, they contain few mutant cells. These are the mutant cells. These are the mutant cells. Sensitive population of a microbe contains few mutant cells which require higher concentration of the antimicrobial agent for inhibition. They require higher concentration. These mutant cells, they are selectively preserved and get a chance to proliferate when the sensitive cells are eliminated by the antimicrobial agent. And what happens later on, the sensitive strain has been replaced by a resistant one as happens when a single anti-tubercular drug is used. When a single anti-tubercular drug is used, a sensitive strain has been replaced by a resistant one. And this is called as the vertical transfer of resistance. This is called as the vertical transfer of resistance. Now there is one more transfer that is called as horizontal transfer of resistance or it is called as the gene transfer or it is also called as the infectious res uh, resistance. Infectious resistance or gene transfer or horizontal transfer of resistance. There are three processes by which it occurs. Conjugation, transduction and transformation. So what is meant by conjugation? Conjugation means there is a, it occurs through direct contact with the sex pilus. It occurs through direct contact with the sex pilus or passage of the resistant gene by direct contact with the formation of sex pilus or a bridge. So Salmonella typhi becomes resistant to the chloramphenicol. It's an example of conjugation. Now transduction, transfer of resistant gene through the bacteriophage. Bacteriophage means the virus which infects bacteria. Virus which infects bacteria we call it as bacteriophage. So transfer of resistance genes through the bacteriophage is one of the process that is called as transduction. Staphylococcus they show resistance to the rifampicin. Transformation. Resistance bacteria release free DNA. They, re they release free DNA which carry resistance into the environment by other bacterial cells. Now other bacterial cells also become resistance because resistance bacteria releases free DNA and that DNA carries the resistance into the environment. So penicillin G shows resistance in pneumococci. Penicillin G becomes, shows resistance to the pneumococci or pneumococci shows resistance to the penicillin G, whatever you can say. Now, in this diagram, you can easily understand what are the various pathways by which it becomes resistance. First is the efflux pump. Efflux pump, here you can see these are the efflux pump. Means for any drug to be get effective, for any drug, if it has to be effective, it should accumulate inside the bacteria. It should accumulate inside the bacteria and then only it will get effective. Means it should reach to the site of action and it should attain effective concentration. It should attain effective concentration inside the bacteria. But because of this efflux pump, what happens? All the drug is expelled through this efflux pump. All the drug is expelled. Means drug cannot accumulate inside the bacteria. Drug cannot deposit inside the bacteria. So, fluoroquinolones, aminoglycosides, tetracycline, beta-lactams, macrolide. The development of resistance is because of there is a efflux pumps are there. They will expel all the drugs from the bacteria. Then, next is the inactivation of the enzyme. Inactivation of enzyme Certain drugs like beta-lactams, they are inactivated by beta-lactamase. Aminoglycosides, it's a common mechanism. Various microorganisms liberate drug-destroying enzymes. Various microorganisms, they liberate drug-destroying enzymes so that drug is destroyed. 
Staphylococcus aureus, Haemophilus, Gonococci inactivate penicillin and cephalosporin by producing beta-lactamase that destroy the beta-lactam ring. That destroy the beta-lactam ring. The beta-lactamase is known as penicillinase or cephalosporinase depending on the subset. E. coli, H. influenza, S. typhi resistant to the chloramphenicol destroyed a drug by chloramphenicol acetyltransferase. These are the names of the various enzymes which will destroy the drug. Gram-negative bacilli destroy aminoglycoside by phosphorylating or acetylating or adenylating them. So these are the various enzymes which will destroy various drugs. Now block penetration. They block the penetration. Means impermeable to the drug impermeable to the drug adequate concentration of antibiotics are not achieved in bacterial cell adequate concentration of the antibiotics are not achieved in the bacterial cell because antimicrobial agents enter the bacterial cell through specific channels they enter into the cell through specific channels or by specific transport which is lost in the resistant organisms which is lost in the resistant organisms. Antibiotics are not able to penetrate to reach the site of action, to reach the site of action. In gram-negative bacteria, the inner membrane is covered by outer membrane of lipopolysaccharide and capsule which can not penetrate by some antibiotics, while other antibiotics can diffuse through porins or proteins which are aqueous channels in the outer membrane. Means in the next slide we will see there is a difference in the gram positive and gram negative gram positive and gram negative in gram negative bacteria inner membrane is covered by outer membrane inner membrane is covered by outer membrane of lipopolysaccharide and capsule which cannot be penetrated by some antibiotics and this is one of the reason for the resistance right Aminoglycoside concentration is much lower in resistant gram-negative organism. Permeability of penicillin is reduced in resistant gonorrhea. So these are the reasons. Then target modification. Target modification like fluoroquinolones, beta-lactams, vancomycin, rifamycin. There is a penicillin binding protein which is the target for the penicillins. There is alteration in that. There is an alteration in that uh, particular target. So these are the reasons or these are the mechanisms by which resistance is developed. Now there are few elements like transposable elements or insertion sequences, transposons, only insertion sequence and transposons are important for the resistance. So transposons or insertion sequence, what is mean by insertion sequence? Short segment of DNA, short segment of DNA, as you can see, this is the short segment of DNA, encoding enzymatic functions. They are encodes for the enzymatic functions like transposes or resolves for site specific recombination with inverted repeat sequence at either end at either end inverted repeat sequence will be there now what is mean by insertion sequence what is mean by plasmid so here you can see composite transposons there is an insertion sequence so insertion sequence can copy themselves and insert themselves into a chromosome or a plasmid they do not encode for resistance but they function as a site for integration of other resistant encoding elements for the plasmid or for the transposons. Now plasmids, what is mean by plasmid? Plasmid is the extra chromosomal genetic material. Here you can see plasmid. These are the extra chromosomal genetic material which is present in the cytoplasm. Plasmid present in the cytoplasm, these are nothing but the extra chromosomal genetic material and they carry genes coding for resistance. They carry the genes which coding, uh, coding for resistance. This is called as plasmid. Now here you can see, these are the various examples of the 
efflux pumps these are the various examples of the efflux proteins these are nothing but the proteins you, here you can see efflux pump examples multi drug toxic compound extruder major facilitator super family atp binding cassette transporter so these are the various types of efflux proteins which are present on the cell membrane which expel all the drug from the bacteria means that drug cannot accumulate inside the bacteria and it will not be effective now the cross resistance this refers to a phenomenon where microorganism resistant to one drug are also resistant to another drug to which organism was not previously exposed and they exhibited among chemically they exhibited upon chemically and mechanically similar compounds or related compounds cross resistance is seen among chemically and mechanically related compounds or drugs when microorganism develop resistant to one drug it is also resistant to the other drug of the same category or same group even when that drug is not exposed to that particular microorganism and we call it as a cross resistance we call it as a cross resistance resistant example resistant to one tetracycline that means resistant to all tetracycline if there is a resistant to tetracycline one tetracycline that means it will going to show resistance to doxycycline minocycline all tetracyclines then partial cross resistance is also seen among the amino glycoside now what is meant by partial cross resistance unrelated drugs like erythromycin lincomycin they may show partial cross resistance partial cross resistance is either one way or either two way one way means neomycin resistance by enterobacteria c makes insensitive to the streptomycin but streptomycin sensitive organisms are susceptible to neomycin that is only one way means neomycin and streptomycin neomycin resistance by enterobacteria c makes insensitive to the streptomycin but streptomycin sensitive organisms they are susceptible to the neomycin this is one way partial cross resistance now two way tetracycline and doxycycline if the drug if that microorganisms showing resistance to tetracycline it will show resistance to doxycycline and vice versa so this is all about the cross resistance